What the hell does it matter? Hello, interwebs, and welcome back. I'm Shanna, and this is why I share my life and stories and visions and opinions, and whatever else I feel like. And this video might be a little bit controversial because these are the reasons you should not move to Japan. And this is my quick little disclaimer for you guys. The views that I'm expressing in this are not the opinions of all expats living in Japan. They are not the opinions of all Japanese people in Japan. They are just opinions based on my own experiences, my friends and their experiences. And we're just sharing it with you. It's supposed to be kind of funny. So don't take it too seriously. Don't get offended. If you are offended, feel free to let me know in the comments. I don't really care. It's fine. Let's have some fun and let's get into the reasons why you shouldn't move to Japan. Let's go. Reason number one you shouldn't move to Japan. You think your life is gonna be like your favorite anime. And um, let's just refer to a conversation between April and I to show what this is like. They think it'll be that, and that, and that, when in reality, it's this. LOL, this is the perfect image of what anime weebs think their life in Japan will be like. Girl running with bread bumps into handsome man. Yes, girl running with toast and jam. Oh my God, adorable. Their life will be a cute schoolgirl running with toast in her mouth, and then she will crash into some cool guy. But it's not. It's this, less this, and more this. <laughs> and that's the truth. Me and Japan through gifts. Now, this is April's personal experience. <laughs> April is so adorable. I love her. And these are very accurate. The end. Let's be real, that was mostly just work-related stuff and Viva City. It's more this type of friendship and this. <laughs> and lastly, this. And then April decided that she was done, but she wanted me to do mine after sending us this gift, which represented both of us in Japan. And this and this, I started my story. Yep, I can see it so far. Yep, haha, <laughs> yep. Look at all the, the traveling and teaching and oh, me, yep. <laughs> That's you at the end of the day after you experienced all those other gifts. Status, the end. And that, my friends, is what it's really like. It's not like an anime, except for my strange love life, which could kind of be equated to an anime in some aspects. But that's an exception, I think. Yeah. <laughs> the second reason you shouldn't move to Japan, you don't like to challenge yourself. No matter what country you're going to as a foreigner, there's going to be challenges, things that are not going to be easy, things that are going to be different from your normal way of life. And if you don't like to challenge yourself, what's the point? Stay where you're comfortable. Don't come here and make your life hard and the lives of those around you hard. Reason number three, you can't learn to cope with being stared at. Now, one of the things that happens a lot as a foreigner in Japan, no matter what you look like, but especially if you look extremely foreign and not Asian of any kind, you're gonna get stared at a lot. Usually people don't necessarily say anything to you, but they just stare and they stare relentlessly. Or you might even have some people approach you and make comments about things. If you're ethnic of any kind, I've had a few of my black friends have people come up and touch their hair. I've had people with red hair that I know have people just come up and touch their hair. And it's just, it's a thing. Don't run around complaining about it all the time. It's just a part of life. And number four, you want deep relationships with people, but you're not willing to put in any kind of effort. Japanese people are absolutely lovely, but they can be some of the hardest people to get to know. You have to really put in some work and you have to make sure that like you are giving 100%, you are getting to know them, you are showing them that you actually care and that they can be comfortable with you and be open with you because that's not part of their culture. The culture is not extremely open, especially with their emotions and their feelings and their thoughts and ideas. 
So if you want that and you want that deep emotional connection, you gotta put in a lot of work. It's not impossible. Some people it might be impossible with, but it's not impossible to find those relationships. You just have to be willing to work for it. Number five, you aren't ready to learn how to be happy when you're alone. So I think this is another thing that can apply to a lot of different subjects, but basically in Japan, there's gonna be a lot of times where you, you know, maybe you don't have friends to go do things with you. You maybe don't have a plan. You maybe don't have days off with people and you have to be comfortable being alone and doing things by yourself or at least challenging yourself in a way that allows you to grow to the point that you are comfortable with being alone and doing things alone. Now, in Japan, it's very common. You see people going out to eat by themselves, going sightseeing by themselves, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're not comfortable with that, you either have to learn to be comfortable with it or be willing to push yourself and challenge yourself so you can become comfortable with it. Number six, you have a debilitating mental disorder that you are not at all willing to take medication or seek help for. This one is a very touchy subject and I understand that. I am not a psychologist by any means, but I do have a background in mental health and I understand that it's very touchy. But if you know for a fact that you have something wrong, and you're not willing to fix it, moving to a foreign country is not going to fix it. Moving to a foreign country where you are going to right off the bat have disabilities or inabilities with communicating is only going to exacerbate it and it's going to make it more difficult to deal with. And if you are not dealing with it, it's only going to get worse and it's going to make your life hard and it's going to make the lives of those around you really difficult as well. So if you know that you have these problems, no matter where you are, even if you're staying in your home country, if you're thinking about going to another country, try and deal with it. I know it can be difficult, but there are lots of resources out there and there are lots of people who care and lots of people who want to help you. So please help yourself before you come to another country. Number seven, you don't plan to ever leave your apartment. I don't understand this one because when you come to a foreign country, part of it is experiencing that country and experiencing the things it has to offer and experiencing the food and the people and whatever. And if you're just gonna come here and stay in your apartment and not go anywhere, why not stay in your apartment in your own home country? I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, Japan has great healthcare and convenience and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, your first year, things are really cheap. But if you're gonna be here for longer than a year, those taxes go up, your healthcare goes up, it becomes a lot more expensive. And it's just, it's not as easy after your first year. And so if you're not leaving your apartment, if you're not going out and experiencing the world, what's the, what's the point? What, what's the point? You do you, do whatever makes you happy, but I don't get it. I just don't get it. Number eight, you don't drink and you don't like to be around people who don't drink. So you complain about not meeting people because you don't like to go drink. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with not drinking. That's absolutely fine. But a big part of Japanese culture is drinking. It's centered around going out with your coworkers, going out with your friends, going to izakayas, having drinks and eating. And you know what? It's fine if you don't wanna drink, but you can't complain about not meeting people and when people invite you to go do things and you refuse to go because you don't wanna be around other people who are drinking. Like, if you don't wanna drink, that's fine. You don't have to. But, you know, you can still be around people who are drinking. Not everybody gets crazy and acts stupid and acts a fool. And if they do, maybe don't be around those people when they're drinking. But, you know, don't complain either. Does that make sense? Number nine, you have a combination of extremely difficult and debilitating allergies, such as a combination of being gluten intolerant, of having a shellfish, shell, shellfish allergy, of having a soy allergy, all of these different types of allergies, and you cannot eat a lot of different foods. Now, yes, there are ways around that, 
but I will tell you as somebody who I don't have necessarily an allergy and I'm kind of lactose intolerant but um, sometimes I suffer I do however tend to stay on the plant-based diet and for that choice it's even difficult with that Japan doesn't like to customize food they don't like to make exceptions and they do make a huge deal out of allergies but at the same time there's still not a lot of options for them or at least they choose not to have those options to adjust meals for you and like I was saying before a huge thing about Japan is going out and eating and drinking and spending time in restaurants and izakayas and if you are going out and you can't partake in those festivities of especially eating then it's it's not as exciting well no I shouldn't say it's not as exciting but the food is just so good and I had a hard time when I was completely vegan going out with all of my friends who were not vegan and not eating because I was just hungry and looking at all that food and it might be because you know I just like food and obviously I like food look at me but I don't know it's just difficult it's hard it's not impossible but it's something that you really really need to think about before you come here if you have a ton of those allergies because otherwise you <laughs> number 10 you hate I mean hate despise do not engage in at all ever physical activity because in Japan you're gonna have to walk a lot and there are a lot of stairs everywhere especially if you want to go sightseeing anywhere if you want to visit temples if you want to visit shrines if you want to even go shopping there are lots of places that don't have elevators you got to use the stairs you have a lot of public transportation but the public transportation only gets you so far so you have to walk maybe you live a little bit of a ways from the train station you don't want to have to pay to park your bike you have to walk like it's it's a lot of walking it's a lot of physical activity it's one of the reasons Japan tends to stay so healthy I think but if you hate physical activity and if you aren't willing to do it at all it's gonna be real challenging for you here number 11 you're rude now rude people here's what's gonna happen if you come to Japan and you're rude you're gonna be rude to somebody and Japanese people are polite AF so they're just gonna be super polite and super friendly and you may not even realize that you're being rude because they're continuing to be so incredibly polite with you but you know what happens then you are a representation of your country of your society and of your culture you may be the first foreigner that that Japanese person has ever interacted with. You may be one of the few foreigners that that Japanese person has ever interacted with. You are an ambassador. You are making your entire country, your entire culture seem a certain way because you are being a rude So just don't. Don't come here if you're rude. Don't come here if you don't have manners. Keep it away because I'm a nice person. I tend to not be rude and I hate when I meet people who expect me to be rude or expect me to be a certain way because of an interaction that they've had with somebody else. Cause it's really hard to overcome that preset idea of what you expect a culture to be. It's a prejudice and it's, it's something that's really difficult to overcome. So don't bring it here. Stop it. Not all Americans are douchebags. Okay. Number 12 don't come here if you think that all Japanese people are obsessed with anime and that that's all you're gonna talk about and that that's the thing that you're gonna have in common with everybody because yeah there are a lot of people who do like anime it doesn't run their life though and especially over the age of 18 less and less people are obsessed with it and there's nothing wrong with loving it there's nothing wrong with liking it there's nothing wrong with being passionate about it but don't come here and expect that everybody loves it and everybody's into it and everybody's gonna want to talk about it all the time because they don't. It gets really annoying when you meet a Japanese person and they're like, oh, you must have come here because you love anime. No. N no. I don't love anime. I don't hate anime. There are some animes that I do love, some that I'm not fond of, but that's not why I came to Japan. And it's very frustrating 
because a lot of Japanese people have this idea that foreigners come here for that reason and that reason only. There's a lot of other reasons we can come to Japan. Let's try not to perpetuate that stereotype, please. Number 13, you're not at all willing to reach out or talk with or connect to Japanese people and you just kind of stay in your own little gaijin bubble. Now, I understand it can be difficult and it can be challenging, especially when there are language barriers, but I didn't speak any Japanese when I came to Japan. My Japanese now is still not great, but you know what? I have lots of Japanese friends and I'm very glad for that because I've been able to learn more about this culture and learn more about Japan and connect with people in a way that I wouldn't have been able to if I had stayed within my little gaijin circle. Now, it's also great to have those gaijin friends because they understand you and they understand things that other people won't. You can connect with them in ways that you can't connect it with other people. And so that's wonderful but expand your horizons. There are so many amazing Japanese people who wanna be your friend and wanna to get to know you. Get to know them because you can stay friends with Gaijin in your own home country. Do it. Make some Japanese friends. Number 14, you are unable to and unwilling to adapt to new situations and changes because this is very similar to one of the first points that I made, but Things are different, things are always changing, things are going to change, your job, things might change at the last minute, you have to be very quick to adjust, you have to be very willing to adjust, and you have to adjust politely and not seem like you're annoyed by it. And that's just a part of life. That's a part of life no matter where you are. But if you aren't willing to adapt and make those changes and adjust and be open to those changes, you're gonna have a really hard time here. You're just, you're just gonna have a really hard time. Number 15. You think everybody should follow your cultural norms, your cultural ways, because your way, your culture's way, is the right way, and it's the only way. That is absolutely not true. Absolutely not true. There are definitely things that when people's human rights, or what, you know, we believe to be people's human rights are being infringed upon, when people are being hurt, that cultural aspects shouldn't play into that because people shouldn't be being hurt and people shouldn't be being killed and people shouldn't be suppressed. And I fully believe that. And I don't think that cultural aspects should change that. However, there are a lot of things that culturally aren't hurting anybody. It's just different. It's different from what's normal to you. It might be strange. It might feel weird. It might sound weird. It might be difficult to adjust to, especially if it's completely different from what you're used to. But you have to be open to it and willing to understand that you are not in your home country. You are not in your culture. And you have to be open to and accepting of what is different in this culture that you have chosen to place yourself into. And while it's important to, in the proper context and in the proper situation, share maybe what your culture is like in this situation, talk about it, explain it, that's, that's totally fine. But you have to be open to hearing what it's like in their culture and adjusting your style to fit that style when it is appropriate to do that. Does, I hope that makes sense how I explain that. I really do. Sometimes I think I just ramble and what I'm saying doesn't make any sense, but I hope that made sense. <laughs> but basically, your way is not the only way. Your way is not necessarily right, not necessarily wrong, and that's all okay. If nobody's getting hurt, what the hell does it matter? Number 16, you either cannot or are not willing to read between the lines or learn to read between the lines or learn to read the air as they say here in Japan. Japan is not a straightforward society. They don't like to just come out and say when something is wrong or say how something is wrong or say you're doing something wrong or that X should be changed to Y or Y should be changed to Z, whatever the situation may be. And you have to be very conscious 
of what is happening, how things are being said to you, the context of the situation, the literal like vibration that is being put out because people aren't just going to tell you and then you end up later feeling upset or feeling like an idiot when you realize that someone was upset in a situation or something didn't go the way you wanted it to or your teacher was coming you telling you oh you know this is this way and but it's fine you can leave it like that and you leave it like that and then it comes back to you that they didn't like it and they were upset but they told you that you could leave it like that because you already put in the work no them coming to you and saying anything to begin with was their way of telling you hey, you should change this, but I'm not gonna tell you to change it. And it can be extremely frustrating in a lot of situations, especially if your culture is a very direct culture and very straightforward and people just tell you like it is. It can be hard and it can be frustrating, but I promise you it is doable. You just really have to be aware of the people around you and what they may or may not be thinking. And in some ways, you kind of can be expected to be a bit of a mind reader and you are going to make mistakes because of that. But do your best, pay attention to what's happening around you, be aware and try to read the air. And with that, that pretty much wraps it up for this one. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. And if you don't know what to comment down below, leave a little teacup emoji. Because as controversial as some of this may have been, and I'm sorry if I offended anybody, that's the tea, people. That is the f***ing tea. And not only does that help out my channel a lot, but it lets me know that you are here. It gives us a chance to chat. And of course, I love to see your faces down there. If you want to know whether, blah, 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 blah. if you want another way to support my channel down below, there will be links to my Patreon, my merch store, and my website. There's zero obligation to check any of those out, but if you want to, you can. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all so very much. And uh, let me know your thoughts. Thank you. See you guys soon. Bye. I think, I don't think. Always with the sirens. Your cultural, cult, blah, blah, blah. number 16. What, what was that? I wasn't even looking at the camera.